Good morning. I'm Brett Boyer Jones. I'm going to be talking um, a little bit about something that I actually presented at a late breaking lightning talk last year on. That was a really early stage at that point. Um, since then, we were able to take a lot of the feedback that we got here, and um, we, we published a, a paper earlier this year. We've gotten some, some good uptake from, from different people using it. Um, and so I'd really like to thank everybody who was here last year uh, for their feedback. So um, we started out by just um, reading some information that um, really worried us. So about two thirds of um, microarray gene expression experiments were considered not reproducible. And even in the cases where papers are reproducible, they take a huge amount of time. So this is considering how much time it would take a grad student to reproduce a single paper using a uh, drug target network. And so we wanted to do a little bit of investigation ourselves into um, how realistic that, that two thirds number was. And so we looked at just this one package, which is uh, called Brain Array, which are custom probe set definition files um, and a really simple differential expression analysis. And so when you use different versions of the software, they do a good job of updating it and they update it almost every year. But when you use different versions, you find um, in some cases vastly different numbers of sig significant genes. And so a huge problem is that people don't actually cite which version they use. Um, so, so over half of the, the most popular and most recent papers um, don't cite which version of the software they use. And for some of the versions of the software, you actually get this page when you try to, try to go load it, so for some of the older versions. Um, so it really looks something more like this. And so we developed an approach we call continuous analysis. Um, I won't get into the, the Docker or um, the Docker side of things, but it's really combining Docker with continuous integration to rerun um, all of your analyses and to regenerate your results at, at each major code change or data change. And so this was something we wanted to provide researchers with reproducibility without doing um, a lot of work and not forcing them into any particular workflow other than Docker. And so there's really three things you need to do to set it up. You need to create your, your initial Docker container, which a lot of people are doing anyways configure continuous integration to actually rerun your analyses, and then just push source code or, or data changes to the repository, and, and it can automatically rerun. And it, it gives some really useful outputs. Um, so beyond the normal, um, the, the normal Docker containers, where you can now recreate the exact environment of the original authors, you're getting things like a comparison of results and, and a time sequence of results over time. So in this case, it, an additional um, gene was added and you can see the, the way that it actually affects the result. Um, and you get audit logs, which describe everything that was done in, in sort of this clean continuous integration container. Um, so even in cases where you can't share the actual data, you can share um, this audit log so people can sort of follow along and see if their steps diverge from you at step three as opposed to step 100, where's the final result. Um, so we've used this several times internally. We've seen it used externally. I'm just gonna give one real quick example. Um, so this was actually comparing strategies for handling missing data at Geisinger Health. Um, and they have about 750,000 patients, but even just to do this study, we needed to get an extensive data usage agreement in place um, that, that took almost a year. And this is just one of the, the examples from um, our, our preprint that's about to go up. But the, the major change here is, is actually in, in panel B, where it makes much more sense to have the, the complete patients as, as a different factor because um, they're a portion of the, the overall patients. Um, so that's the change and it's, it's directly um, tied to the actual code changes that, that made that. Um, and so you don't really need to, to, to read that, but this is the, the kind of the, the GitHub log of, of everything that was changed. And so with that, I would like to um, thank everybody who's helped out in this work. And um, I just wanted to actually mention a, a, another recent preprint, since a big theme of ISMB this year seems to be data sharing. We recently put up a preprint on um, deep learning and differential privacy to create synthetic patient populations. So, so taking um, real people and generating synthetic patients off them while preserving privacy so that you could share that data. So thanks.